Well, hello there, YouTubers! So, uh, today is, of course, Monday the 31st of August 2020, and I've got to make this video straight away urgently because I need to make this video until about September. Which is just sad. It's sad that summer's going away. But, anyways, I try not to part here. Uh, my goodness me. Hopefully, this video is not going to be a rough one. Oh, my goodness me. Why am I feeling like this video is going to be one I really want to give up? But, anyways. I'm going to take a look at a whole bunch of flip-up toys straight away just before the 1st of September 2020. Can I do it just before midnight? Oh my goodness me, it's going to be a very huge transition from summer to autumn though guys and hopefully this video may or may not be the last video overall being uh, produced on August 2020 and overall summer 2020 is dying but anyways I'm just going to take a look at uh, two flip-up products from January 117. Uh, straightforward, like so. So I'm just going to grab these products here. And I'm just going to take a look at what we have now. Uh, both of these are almost cost the same price here. These are British Wildlife Collection Minis uh, Flip Up Origami Toys for, for the future, as you can tell. And let me just start off with this one here. This is, of course, a Great Crested Greed Chicks 12 pack. Two pounds going on, or three pounds. There's the back of the packaging. It looks like these guys are all they're just swimming on white water and stuff like that. And they're not ducks because they have a powerful but long beak. As I've just rearranged the words while reading this sort of info like so, eh? Actually, it's that section, eh? Why am I being rough and ready in this video, eh? But anyways, with a medium amount of thickness, they look so good, as I can tell. And um, I'm actually not going to unpack this product here because it's got one of the most crappiest of all packagings of all time. And the reason why it's so crap is because when you unpack them, there's going to be a whole bunch of ripping and tearing and busting. And that's also going to destroy the product there. And it's also going to make the flip flap toys just run amok and just run away straightforward from the packaging though and there's the other product here which is this one here it's a baby or pre-juvenile uh, newborn seagulls 12 pack it costs about two pounds uh, oh I've just burped <laughs> my goodness me I've just burped straightforward in this video eh? but um, this one here it's a flip up origami minis product here and there's actually two words minis I'm not sure if you can see that but I think that might be some sort of weird Everyone the flip up logo though, I was originally going to do that like, you know, in the Ash Ketchum, well wait, no, actually, in the original flip up sort of logo, I guess, but, um, yeah, very interesting. So here's the back of the packaging here, it looks like these seagulls are having fun in the water here, say no more, because, once again, it's got the crappiest amount of packaging that we've got here, so far. But let me just move on into some flip up vehicles, straight forward though, so I'm actually going to start off with this one here, which is of course Callum Spinner, and the reason why I called him Callum Spinner is because he's modelled after not a Screamer's Escalade, but a real Cadillac Escalade, like you know the American brand of cars. Pretty amazing. Now, once again, it's got the face that you might see in like you know Disney Pixar's Cars. Of course, there's Cars One, Cars Two, and Cars Three. I should have just shown you the three fingers just to represent the films eh but anyways very nice detailing though and I'm um, trying to cover it simple because I wanted to get this video readily and easily done just before September 2020 and there's the back there very interesting details it's got the word Escalade on the bottom left of this car here very weird license plate that I won't read though and funny enough there's two sections there where you know in a sense there's areas for you that you can actually scan and um, I'm going to call these barcodes. That's always is beautiful. In fact, all of these sections here are, of course, called barcodes because of the way they look like that, of course. But anyways, let me just show you the bottom of this car here. He's got blue eyes, as I can tell, though. But, yes, yeah, the bottom of this car here. I can see the name Callum Spinner, the Screamers Escalade. Very interesting car model name, of course. It's got blue eyes. It's got the Screamers logo. Yeah, pretty amazing, eh? Very, very amazing. It's got the very cool looking tail lamps up this section here. Very, very nice indeed. And uh, lovely top detailing as well. Very nice detailing on that car here. Lovely white wheels, though. But let me just show you. I know that for the fact that this car is probably one of the biggest cars I've ever made, though. That SUV. He's very, very nice. Cadillac Spinner. I'll say no more because I need to get this video straightforward done before September, eh? Here's Carl Lincoln, the um, lime green hatchback. And the reason why I've named him Carl Linkle is because he's designed after Link from Legend of Zelda. Well, not really, though. But I actually noticed that this car is also called the Opel Carl uh, instead of the Vauxhall Viva in, you know, you know, in the UK. Though I think in continental Europe they call it like 
the Opel Carl for unknown reasons. Maybe it's named after Carl Benz, you know, the original person who created the first car. Well, maybe not. But anyways, here's the name on the back. Well, actually, the bottom, sorry, though. The back's actually this section here. Well, I'm actually getting things mixed up, though. But anyways, that's just me. Anyways, it's called the Screamers Viva. It's called the Screamers Viva. That's all I've... Uh, yeah, I think I've just said it correctly, though. I think the first attempt that I've actually just said it was pretty much incorrect, though. But anyways, here's the front of the car here. It's got, of course, a radiator grill on the front with a Screamers logo. Very cool looking smiley faces, I can tell. As I can tell, of course. Without sounding like a rough, puny nerd. But anyways, yes, I'm not a nerd because I haven't got a glasses on. So, by looking at this car here, it's got a radiator grill for the fact that if it has got a radiator grill, or if he has got a radiator grill, well, maybe this car overall has got a moustache. So, if I think of a radiator grill, uh, anthropomorphic car, radiator grilled anthropomorphic car, of course, um, I'd probably say that this car is like someone who is driving along and has got a moustache in his face. Pretty much the nicest thing I can say here, once again, once again we've got the barcode, just to resemble the things that we normally see in cars, like, you know, we try to, um, you know, scan these cars. It's a little bit like fueling up for petrol, diesel, and other, you know, types of fuel you might get, like, you know, electric, hydrogen, and all the other fuels, like, you know, biofuel. And if I bring in um, this car here, I'm very sorry if I'm sounding rough and ready here because I need to get this video straight forward towards uh, the 31st of August before September 2020. Um, this one here is a lot more taller. I think Adme, I hope you've got the name correctly here, she's a lot more taller because she's got a box and an antenna at the top there on the roof. And uh, the best thing about this car is that you can actually store stuff along the way here. Yeah. Well, I think Carl Lincoln, it's a bit boring though. But anyways. He looks cool for the fact that if I show you the back here, SK16 KIL, and mind you, I think he could be a learner's driver for the fact that the letter L could be like some sort of weird uh, error, or it could be a very weird bold writing. Maybe he's like a rookie or a novice sort of driver though. But anyways, he's so cool that he could drive everywhere. So I think that's it for the cars, guys. Uh, I'm not going to cover them anymore though because I think I need to get. All the flip up products here sorted out here guys, eh? But I'm just going to show you this product here. This one is, of course, the Asian Palm Civet Small Tropical and Nocturnal Horde 5 pack. It costs about uh, £8.95. There's the back of the packaging here. Straightforward, okay. So there's five Palm Civets or Asian Palm Civets. They're also known as Toddy Cats, but they're actually more of a mongoose like mammal, as I can tell. So all that information guff. Right, I'm just going to unpack it straight away. I'm just gonna. I think this is gonna be a real challenge, just making a video throughout the rest of August 2020. Because mind you, I want this video uploaded in August rather than September. So here's one of the Asian palm civets. I'm actually gonna show you all of them because I just feel like, mind you, if I don't show you all, there's five of them. And what's strange about these guys, eh, is that they all look the same, maybe almost the same. Thanks for the fact they've got different stripe patterns. Uh, actually, they've got spot patterns a lot, though, guys. I think the only stripe pattern I can only see is their their main looking thing, you know, like you would normally see on a on a horse on a lion, I guess. So, but anyways, maybe a zebra. But anyways, uh, these are Asian palm civets. Looks like a very weird um, weasel mongoose ferret thing. Okay, but they, I think they're more related to cats and mongoose. Maybe mongoose. Did I just said the word mongoose. There, I think it's more like mongoose. That's a mo or mongooses is a much better plural name, I think. But the best thing about these guys is, look at this. They've got licensing info on their necks, which is one of the best things I can see here, guys. And one of the strangest aspects about these guys is that they've actually got purple noses. So why in the flipping neck would a palm civet would literally have purple noses on the front though, or a purple nose at the front though, as I could refer to one civet. But anyways, this part overall looks sort of cool. There's nothing much going on here, other than the fact that they are designed after uh, actual Asian palm civets though. Lovely palm tree sitting at the back here. Okay, oh my goodness me, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare just showing you all these with that toys though. Now uh, what's the next one here? This one here is of course the Great Cormorant Breeding Plumage Wild Fishing 12 Pack, £15.95. There's the back of the packaging here with the cormorants and the fish there. They're called roaches. And I'm not going to read all of that info there because I need to get this video straight away. 
just before uh, September arrives and midnight. And um, I'm just going to show you the fishy straight away there. And lucky enough, I haven't got the trains with me there because if I did have the trains there, that's going to take a long time to produce those. So here are the fishies straight away out of their packagings, as I can tell. I should have made this video straight away at um, 8 o'clock today. Or maybe somewhere just after dinner though. That would have been a much better performance day, as I can tell straight away though. But anyways, here are of course, uh, I would just say a flock of cormorants today. They've got uh, white necks, so maybe, maybe not really that much of a white headed sort of do they? I think the necks look pretty much white because they're in bleeding plumage. I'm not going to flap these boots because they pretty much look similar to all the other cormorants, like you know, all the other great cormorants that I've covered previously though. So that's two of them done straight away though. Okay, so let me move on to another product here. Oh, I think this is one I've never covered this one before, but I think I've heard of this species before. I've actually made products like this before uh, about the house sparrow and the tree sparrow. Eight o'clock, oh sorry, eight pounds, sorry, eight o'clock pounds. Why do I get things mixed up though? But anyways, here is of course a house and tree sparrow, a small flock, five pack. Anyways, here's the back of the packaging here, without sounding like a lunatic, without even making things up, eh? Look at this, he says, oh my goodness me, did you know that we are more common than tree cousins, or than our tree cousins? Oh, what is that reading there? That's pretty weird reading, eh? Oh my goodness me. I do, because we eat more and spend more time, we eat more and spend time in the city a lot. Well, oh my goodness me, I wonder what that reading is. What a puny tree sparrow who doesn't know how to, um, I wonder what this is. Who doesn't know urban life? That's pretty. Uh, that's actually quite rude, eh? But anyways, let me just go ahead and unpack this and see what the sparrows are like, though. So there they are, and I'm just going to show you another one here. I think we've got like two female sparrows there, house sparrows there. They've got wing patterns like that. Yeah, it looks like they've got gold wing patterns there, but it looks a bit they sort of very weird colours there along the way there. But I might try and show you the male house sparrows because I think they're more familiar in deer hunting and design of course though and I'm really going to say I'm very sorry for being too rough though because I need to get this video just before or maybe just before the time when there's toilet maintenance going on here and I can't stand that sort of performance but here's the tree sparrow, it's got wing patterns like that it's got a head like that okay so that's that there's one of the house sparrows here, the male ones there Actually, I haven't shown you the females uh, perfectly though. You've got a head like that. I'm just trying to be very simple though because I'm trying to condense time just before, you know, toilet maintenance comes. And as I said before, just now, I hate that sort of time. And there was that one moment that um, I think it was from the Thunderstorm webcam activity um, part 5 video that it was very nasty and rough though. But, anyways. These products are done. Oh my goodness me, he's actually put a lot of these products though. Let me show you this one here. Juvenile Mute Swan Horde, actually Small Horde 5 pack, £15.50. Why is this one's pretty expensive though? But anyways, this is like a classic reboot. Actually a modern day classic reboot of one of the classic products I did back on the 9th of January 2019. Pretty much it's going to have the same sort of design as the Mute Swans I did back on the 9th of January 2019. Very interesting faces that they've got, eh? Oh, they're looking a lot more... Yes, maybe not that... Ex ex I'm pretty sure... I initially thought these guys... Um, yeah, they look pretty much the same. I initially thought these guys were pretty much uh, expressive. Uh, the only disadvantage about these guys is that they don't contain any licensing info, though, but they make great pool toys or water toys. Overall, they're just sort of a very cheapish sort of water toy. Uh, that I've just made recently day and I'm just gonna put these away straight forward day and uh, mind you that that very weird screamers beaver toy car there has got some very different detailing day but let me just take a look at this it here uh, the Baja Californian Winter Starfish Feast 12 pack £13.50 it's got some western gulls probably one of the oldest seagull species I might have covered actually it is for the fact that there is, of course, a video, which is, of course, my second video that I've just had to look at. And uh, this packaging everywhere has been pretty unpacked because I've just made a whole bunch of takes on it and I've failed so much though. There's six of these Patrick Stars, 
face has Patrick Star fishies, as I can tell. Oh my goodness me, all that SpongeBob SquarePants references just brings back memories, doesn't it, eh? It really does indeed. But let me show you one of the Western girls, the seagull, as I can tell, the Western seagull from California, or like, you know, up towards British Columbia. It's got, um, how would you say it? Got a brown, dirty, streaked head. Got a very weird sound. And uh, I'm actually going to show you, I'm actually going to prove my point. I've actually only, you know, I've actually only got six of these guys here. Why am I sounding pretty rough today? Yeah, as I can tell, straightforward. I'm just rushing this because I need to get this video uh, straightforward just before uh, September. And let's not forget, all of them say Western Girl. But the very strange fact is that they don't refer to what type of plumage that they've got. I know they've got a sort of a very weird, dirty, brown, streaked sort of head like many seagulls do. The large ones, of course, that they often do in autumn and winter. They molt their feathers into some sort of weird, dirty, yet nasty... Um, I would just say plumage, uh, which often is, I would just say, it, dirty and brown street looking, of course. And actually, there's an area here. One of the seagulls overall is not dirty brown and street. Quite weird, eh? It looks like this one's the only one in breeding plumage. That's strange for a 13 pound 50 product. Let me just go ahead and take this one here. Uh, this one's called the North American Western Gal uh, Small Sexual Dimorphic Flock 5 Pack, 7 pounds. Um, let me just have a look at it. No, oh my goodness, I initially thought it was £7.05, but it's actually £7.95, but here's the back of the packaging here. It looks like these girls here, it looks like they're pretty much aggressive, the male ones there, it looks like they're confrontating each other there. It looks like they're confronting, oh my, I think I should have never said the word confrontating, I think it's more like confronting with each other there. I think that's what we all have guys there, so here's of course the male. No eyelashes, as I can tell by the face. And here's the other side as well, and uh, it's got the name here, male western girl. There's three males, and we've got two females. Straightforward, I'm actually not going to flat all of the other males. In fact, maybe maybe next time, if I make the same species, I'm not going to feel like I'm going to flat all of them. In fact, it's going to be pretty much the same, yeah, pretty much the same. But anyways, there's two females here. Both of them got eyelashes there, although one of them looks like it's got a very weird sort of cheek. I cheek, I guess. That section there, I believe. But anyways, and what's quite funny is, is that the males actually have a lot more of a blackish. Oh my goodness, they a wingtip. But the females of all, they look more slate grey. Sort of weird, isn't it? Eh? I actually realised that the wingtips on the males are a lot more darker and blacker compared to the females. Let me take a look at this one here. This one here is, of course, the American Yellow Perch Fish Shoal Fly Pack. It's a little bit like a 10 minutes in 10 minutes product, eh? £6.95. There's the back of the packaging here. There's five fish, and it's based on the yellow perch uh, fish of North America, and it's biologically smaller than the European perch that we have in our country. And Europe, of course. Uh, anyways, let's take a look at the fishies and what we've got, eh? Wait, do we have four or five? Actually. Hang on a second. There's an error here. We've only just got four fish. That's not meant to happen. That's very disappointing for a toy view. How sad is that? I usually thought there's five, but there's four. Oh, give me a break. That is not right. That is actually not right. That's literally not right. I've only got. F oh my goodness me. I've only got four of these. The packaging tells me it's a five. It's supposed to be a five pack. Give me a break. Oh, but anyways, they've actually got nice detail, you know, because I need to show you the fish today. Um, there'll be a whole bunch of people saying, "Oh, you didn't show you the fish, though." Anyways, here you go. It looks like that. Very interesting. Um, trying the details like that. Lovely. It's got yellow eyes though. Got a green head, a pair of yellow fins, and a brown coral fin or tail. Which is the part where fishies often go side to side, you know, swaying side to side. Okay, let's move on to another for that product. Once again, some more seagulls. So let's look at that girl, a small flock, five pack, and I think it's a sub adult sort of version of the lesser black back girl, seven pounds. Back of the packaging looks like that. Looks like one seagull. Looks like he's confronting one another, just like we have with these western girls. And here we go with some information there. Like say about the brown wing patterns, they're visible on both sides. 
Very similar to that of an adult lesser blackback girl. But the main difference is, is because they've got brown, they are sub adults. But I'm pretty sure, I wonder how these girls. Uh, did that just molt them? I'm pretty sure. I think they do molt them because. Yeah, I think seagulls, I think particularly the large ones, they take like maybe like four or five years to molt their feathers. That's the main thing I can see here going on there. So, like, you know, every, um, every summer and every winter, maybe like even, you know, during transitional seasonal periods, they often molt their feathers, you know, like so. Maybe it's not due to temperature um, ranges, but I think it's to do with uh, seasonal changes, not just in temperature, but also the way on how other things often change in the way as you know as the year progresses. Though, but anyways, let me just go ahead and show you this product here: uh, the Coltit Small Flock Five Pack Feeder Type Flock, or oh my goodness me, I wonder what it says here, or Migration Type uh, Flock. Very weird crosswording going on here. That's the main thing that you often see in flip flap products here. It's often simply known as the coal tip because its full name is the Eurasian coal tip. I've actually seen this bird before. £7.50. It is a pretty common looking bird. Hopefully, maybe during autumn time, I might probably attract a whole bunch of species though. Maybe drop some conkers on the grass though, and maybe try and attract as many animals as possible during autumn because the birds are starving, and when we head towards winter, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. But, anyways, here are the coal tips. They've got grey. And they've got bronze, or is it ochre on the... I think... Uh, oh my goodness me, whenever I think of the house sparrow wings there, I think they've got ochre coloured sort of bronze or golden like wings there. Very weird colours, I should have had a very closer look on the house sparrows, but of course we're coming up towards September, I need to do this video quickly. Very weird different shades of uh, green. Sorry, grey, sorry. Why do I get the names mixed up though? Anyways, there's the name Cold that I've just shown you earlier though, and I'm doing it really fast though because... Oh my goodness me, what is wrong with me? Is it because I'm just, you know, oh yes, oh I remember now, I'm actually just going to make this video straightforward just before toilet maintenance. Yeah, that's a, a very big nightmare though, whenever I'm making videos like this. It's not very good news, is it, eh? But anyways, I'm just going to prove to you that there's only five of these guys here, like so. And I'm um, not going to flap all of them. That's a that detail straightforward, eh? Very similar details. As I can tell, pretty much like a very weird uh, grey sky. It's like a very weird sepia toned version of the blue and gold. Oh my goodness me, I think it's like the uh, the blue tip and the grey tip, but more of a sepia sort of tone coloured uh, detailed sort of bird, eh? Anyways, without sounding livid though, here is of course a red and green wings macaw small wild flock 5 pack, £7.99. A very nice sort of product to end. The season, I believe, eight pounds. Of course, I've actually got a couple of more uh, tropical animal species to create. Only two more, so if I do two more from tomorrow, I'll be done and dusted, and hopefully a whole bunch of freedom. And uh, wow, that's something you don't often see in flapping good toys. Yeah, it looks very, very nice, native to the near tropical regions of the Americas, particularly Brazil. Brazil. Actually, how do I say the word Brazil? Brazil. Brazil. Actually, I'll, I'll probably say the word Brazil in a very fashionate sort of way, eh? So there you go. There's the uh, red and green winged macaw. Overall, they look very similar to scarlet macaws for the fact that if I look back on a scarlet macaw, if I remember, they've got much more of a darker sort of blue colour, like in a 00255. But these ones here, they've got a very lighter and yet different sort of tone on the blue here. And uh, they've got green wings. Green wing patterns, actually, though, on both sides, as the name suggests. And even on the tail section there, the bottom part of the tail, though, that's literally um, another thing to look out for. Very different to that of a scarlet macaw, even though this one here is a bit of a very weird uh, error here on the colours, though. But, anyways, green wing macaws, they're overall, I think, if I remember, they're one of the largest macaw species. Uh, well, actually, they're overall second to the Hyacinth macaw, which is one species of macaw that I actually don't see. And what's very unique about these guys here is, is that if you look closer on a, on a, oh, I almost said scarlet macaw, but these are red and green wing macaw, uh, sort of flock, eh? Uh, actually, I should have, I should have placed the letter S though. Uh, red and green wing macaws, uh, 
What's very unique about these guys is that they've got a very weird red face pattern. Looks like they're red in the face, but they're not angry or livid as an angry bird. But anyways, that's the five of these guys. Oh my goodness me, I was feeling like I'm actually quite good at making videos like this, eh? And last but by no means least, Capybaras! Cute cartoonic... Oh my goodness me, cute cartoonic Capybara herd 12 pack. In fact, a group of Capybaras is called a herd because... Yes, I know this product costs about £15.50. Overall, these guys, they're very big and they're one of the largest, in fact, the largest rodent ever in the world, eh? And I gotta tell you guys, eh? This is gonna be amazing. Um, I know they're rodents, but they look sort of. I'm pretty sure these got. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, man. They've also got buck teeth at the front. Very amazing. I might probably show you all of them because it looks so cute, and the best thing about these guys is that they are all licensed by Flip Flap, which is a nice thing. In fact, I haven't, haven't um, seen this sort of activity like this before. They're putting licensing info on non-flapping bird toys, or maybe I might be totally wrong here. Putting text underneath is the, you know, the thing I should have said there. And they come in different shades of brown, and they're also pretty much uh, a creature of all in terms of how I make them. Uh, it looks like they've got very weird innards like that, at like the bottom like that. But what's strange about these guys is that if I bring this one here and that one there, they're actually at a different length though. Maybe not though. Some of them are the same, but these two ones, I think these two here, uh, this one's a little bit longer on that section there. Actually this one's a bit shorter than that one there at the background though. Interesting, isn't it? So the packaging really does tell me that these capybaras overall uh, they look more of a, a very weird, I think they're about the same size as a small pig. Correct me if I'm wrong eh guys, but these guys, they look like more of an, an ungulate rather than a rodent though, but they have the buck teeth at the front though, which really saves them as being categorised as being a rodent. Very nice sort of creatures, very very large guinea pig like creatures overall, and uh, I have seen some people keeping them as pets, but you know, in our country, we normally don't keep capybaras as pets though, but anyways, that is of course the last, but by no means least, products ever wore to review, and uh, I've only got about two more flip flap products to review, uh, from Tuesday, hopefully today, and it's going to be amazing, uh, oh my goodness me, it feels like it's been a, a very rough and ready sort of video, eh? maybe I should have made a proper one. Uh, just now though, uh, maybe around, um, what time, I, I should have been making this video about, um, how would you say it, maybe I could have made this video straight forward from about, you know, 8pm or 7pm, would have been much better at that time though, just to review toys like that, all the toys I, uh, I just want to review like so, but anyways, I hope you've enjoyed a very long summer, sadly this year's summer is no like Overall, you know, it's been very disappointing because of COVID-19, so anyways, give this video a like, please do, and mind you, my hands are dirty because I've been, you know, detailing a whole bunch of stuff like that, and um, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel as always, as per usual though, if you can, that would be amazing, wouldn't it, eh? And as always, I really want to say thank you so much for watching in this very interesting video, but I'm also very sorry that this video has been so, so rough and ready though, because I need to get this video really, in fact, uploaded just before September, because I really want to make more and more videos for this year's August before September comes and haunts my dreaming, sort of, you know, wish of just making a whole bunch of videos about the cut toys. Okay, that's it. Bye for now.